They are six and a half games back behind the eight seeded Clippers with just 17 games left to play all but officially out of playoff contention. The team says it's planning to scale back LeBron's minutes to close out the season. A lot of people on the show said that might be smart. This would be a complete 180 from the Lakers strategy since the All-Star break, which has been to leave LeBron on the floor as long as possible. James leads the league with 309 minutes played and is on pace to average over 35 minutes per game for the 16th time in as many seasons. So there have been some chants in games about LeBron should go back to Cleveland, Sean. The L.A. situation is obviously not working out the way that LeBron hoped it would. So what are your thoughts on how this season has ended up? It almost seems unbelievable that we're sitting here right now talking about LeBron in this way. Those chants are like trolls on Twitter. Okay, it's really just 20 people with a couple of burner accounts that are screaming and yelling uh, from outside uh, the peripheral, but make a lot of noise. It's not the masses in L.A. However, there is a contingency of fans that were never willing to accept LeBron James because they're Kobe Bryant loyalists. The expectations were, you're bringing in King James, a guy that has gone to the NBA Finals for eight straight years. I don't think anybody in L.A. thought this team would go to the NBA Finals. Certainly, they thought they'd end the playoff drought. That has not happened. There's a difference between tanking and acknowledging the fact that you're not a good team. Hmm. And right now what they've done is, okay, we're basically eliminated. We're no longer tanking, but we do need to save LeBron James because he's our investment moving forward. All right, get Marcus in here for this too because Marcus is as big a LeBron fan as there is. But while we get him set up in here, I want to ask you this question, Sean. If you had to put your finger on one reason why this thing went as badly as it did, I've heard people point to the schedule. It was easy early. Now it's hard. LeBron obviously gets hurt. They were playing well. All the trade talk, maybe that destroyed the momentum and the, and the mentality, if you will, of some of the young players. Put your finger on the one reason why this thing is, to use the word a lot of people are using, the dumpster fire it has become. The front office. They have mismanaged this. That's Magic entire, Johnson we're yeah, talking about, Magic right? Johnson and Rob Palenka. They have mismanaged this roster. They put together a roster that was not made to help LeBron James or play around the skill set that enhances his abilities. You don't have a single shooter on the outside. you got a bunch of guys on one-year contracts that know that they're not going to be there the following year. You've got a bunch of rookies who you publicly exposed, or year two players that you publicly exposed to want to get rid of. So where is your investment? Where is your buy-in to this team being good? There isn't any outside of LeBron James. All right, I want to bring Swagoo in, and I, I want to explain to everyone why I am. Because yesterday, we had a ton of people in here, yeah. and I heard you yelling <laughs> at Jalen and Jay Will, and you just kept saying over and over again, he's the GOAT. LeBron is the yeah. GOAT. What did you mean by that, and what does this season mean to him? It, it, it's changing the narrative. And look, here, here's, the, here's the thing everybody has to realize about LeBron. Everywhere he's been has been built around him. Even it, people talk about he, well, he joined Wade in the Heat. We saw Dwayne Wade relinquish the leadership role to LeBron James when he was in Miami. In Cleveland, you surrounded him with veterans, guys that were st stable and, and really knew their place in the NBA. This is the first time I feel like, and, and it pains me to say this because I love LeBron, and usually I'm an apologist for LeBron. This is the first time in his career where he should have took the bull by the horns and told those young guys, let me teach you all how to do this, right? Even if we having a bad season and we're not winning games, let me pull you under, un, under my wing. Yeah, you can be traded. Yeah, things can go wrong. The front office can make decisions about your future. But let me step in as the veteran, as the champion that I am, as the, as the guy that has brought franchises from the grave back alive and teach you guys how this business goes and how we can play basketball to complement each other. I don't think he's done a good job of that. I think LeBron has just sat back and really took the idea on that everybody else has. We're going to wait a year or two to see how good we can get when we get free agents. Look, you talk about GOAT. There's a difference mentality between a Michael Jordan and a LeBron James. There's a difference in the way that they play. Here's where I think the argument has a little bit of validity. And I'm an MJ guy. I'm admitting it right now. I'm an MJ guy. I always will be an MJ guy when you talk about the greatest of all time in the NBA. But no player in NBA history and maybe professional sports has ever had to come in with the expectation level that LeBron James has. I can only come up with two others in mind. Serena Williams and Tiger Woods. Mm -hmm. They had the expectations young, and then they 
exceeded, exceeded. those expectations yeah. once they actually arrived. LeBron has done it, and he's done it with class his entire career. Do you think that Marcus is right, though, just about the locker room this year for LeBron with the Lakers? Yeah, yes. you said it's the front office. The front office wasn't the only ones that were ready to trade all those young guys away, and they know it. No, that LeBron, LeBron, LeBron definitely team. was, too. But they should, if you were going to really, by the way, if you wanted to trade them now, why didn't you trade them last spring yeah. and get Paul George? But we, we you had the opportunity we, to do that. We can't absolve the responsibility from LeBron to bring his guys in. No, I in, agree. But, and, and then say, well, it's not him the reason why the culture is bad. LeBron has controlled the culture everywhere. So control it this he year with young guys. Coaches. Yeah, he controls coaches. He controls like, front office. I mean, so, so look, it, as hard as it is for me to say, he failed this one, this particular year. Okay, so year. does that put MJ back on your pedestal? Well, MJ is MJ, but I'm still a LeBron guy. Like, I'm not. Right. I, I've never seen Good anything job. like LeBron. Very quickly, because i got to run to some other stuff here. Is he going to get what he wants there? Will they ultimately get this thing right around him there in the next two years? Because that's really all they've got. I know he has three years left on his deal. But let's call it the next two years. Do they get it right? No. Mm. I don't they think don't so get either. It right. They're going to get it right. We'll see. We will see. <laughs> All right, let us get back to the National Football League. On that thought, Marcus has got everything crossed. 